Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This video was originally posted on Patreon because YouTube ain't sh Please feel free to join my Patreon for more deleted, never before seen content. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and I wanted to get on here because of course I wanted to come on here and piss you guys off and do unpopular opinions that I know damn well I can't post on YouTube because of course this shit not going to pass the, the vibe check because you guys know that wet rat looking CEO bitch of YouTube. So I wanted to get on my Patreon slash podcast and talk about a lot of unpopular opinions that I have that I know damn well I can never post on YouTube. So here a lot of them are and I wanted to get on here because you guys seem to really gravitate towards my last one. A lot of you guys really fucked with it, really liked it. And I want to do more of these specifically because a lot of you guys like the ones on my main channel. But the ones on my main channel are tough, but these are like a lot more hectic and getting, you know, more involved in, you know, sinister, political, crazy shit that I know damn well that if I did talk about on YouTube, that shit would get strike the fuck down. Which is crazy because they still allow lick my kitty and finger my poom poom pranks on YouTube. But it is what it is. So here are my unpopular opinions that I know damn well I can never post on YouTube. The term African American is not politically correct. There I said it. It's really not. Now I'm not gonna lie. I didn't really think about this until I did my ancestry DNA test and I started seeing a lot of African Americans and Black Americans do their ancestry DNA test. And one thing I do notice is a lot of people who are of, I, let's put it this way, a lot of people who are basically Black and are from America don't like the term African American and some don't like to be labeled as African American or from Africa because it irritates them. If you want to refer to yourself as that, I respect it, but it doesn't really make any sense because let me explain. What if a lot of y'all actually discovered America, but they just tell you that, oh, you came from Africa. See, you were you you were you were you were wearing loincloths and you know you were kings and queens in Africa. See, you don't own any of this stuff. You know what I mean? What if your ancestors discovered Alabama, Louisiana? What if your ancestors discovered Texas and discovered a good chunk of America, most of the South? The biggest population, the biggest black population is located in the South. And people think that it has a lot to do with the Atlantic slave trade and the West African slave trade and more. But let's be honest here. The term African American is a little bit confusing because how do we know all black Americans come from Africa? What if a lot of them are indigenous to the land that was there and don't hit me with that whole well life started in africa so can europeans white people who are from america refer to themselves as african americans as well since life started in africa let that sink in for a little bit if life started in africa why doesn't everybody else refer to themselves as african americans now me personally i'm black american right i don't connect with the term african american because it doesn't make any sense to me because my lineage is trace back all the way to the Caribbean. I can't, of course, connect with the term African-American until a lot of people it may be seen as sacred, but why do you guys refer to yourself as African-Americans when in reality, your ancestors might have discovered this? Now, here's the thing. A lot of African-Americans actually hate the term African-American and just, just prefer to be called black. Just be, be, prefer to be called black. And anytime you ask them where they're from, they just say, Louisiana. My grandmother's from Louisiana. My great great grandparents, you know, they were indigenous to North Carolina, South Carolina, West Virginia, you know, little stuff like that. So people have to understand that what if they were, you know, inhabitants that were here, indigenous people that were here, what if they were here before everybody else? But they just make us think that the Native Americans, the indigenous people were all lighter skinned thin noses and they all just had bone straight long hair and none of them were black but let's be honest here a lot of black americans have those indigenous features look at beyonce beyonce has like those grouching eyebrows like those naturally arched eyebrows that a lot of people who are black american have those naturally arched eyebrows that blue ivy has those those, those defined cheekbones that people like people like gabrielle union have you know stuff like that is a good example you know a lot of those features stem from indigenous people who were in america first you know a lot of in a lot of black americans are really indigenous and a lot of them really are native americans but a lot of times we because of colorism see it as a oh well no you can't be because you're too black you're too black because we, we for some reason believe that black americans can't be native indigenous people because we believe that they got to have like the indian features so that's why a lot of Black Americans just prefer to be called Americans or just prefer to be called black. You know, Raven Simone said it the best. She doesn't want to be labeled as African American because she doesn't know shit about Africa. Because Raven Simone's ancestral lineage stems to the South. You know, her ties are to Atlanta. Her, her ties are all across, you know, the South. I want to be labeled a human who loves humans. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. Oh, girl, don't, don't set up his Twitter on fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, what? I'm oh, sorry. Lord. What did you just say? Stop, stop. 
You know, that's why Raven Simone doesn't like the term African-American. She was one of the first celebrities to say that. And many celebrities have said the same thing. So a lot of black Americans are indigenous. So let's be real here. Not I'm, I'm, And I'm not saying that so you guys can all walk around wearing feathers. Because realistically, a lot of us don't know what tribes a lot of these black Americans come from. But a lot of black American, Americans can trace back their tribal lineage all the way back to goddamn the, the Cherokee Indians, the Seminoles, you know. They can trace it back as far as those Native American tribes. So let's not sit up here and act like Native Americans only come in one shade and only one phenotype. They came in all different shades, colors. And it's kind of sad that a lot of us just assume that Native Americans look very much like the Latin Americans that you see in Mexico when it's so much deeper than that. Native Americans came in different shades, colors, and sizes. And they just tell people, in my personal opinion, oh, you came from Africa. So you was in Wakanda. This, this, none of this is yours. So they won't be able to inherit anything. What if there's like some deep-rooted truth to where a lot of black Americans come from so that way they won't be able to inherit any land? I feel like we should really stop trying to force black Americans to think that they all come from Africa because a lot of black Americans will sit up here and they get irritated when people say invest into Africa. And I was and I was guilty of that too. I was guilty of telling, oh, you know, we all should just, you know, go to the motherland, go to Africa, invest into Africa. And you already got the, you know, the information. You're already educated on how to do it because we've done it here and made billions of dollars for corporations all day. Africa is the only place in the world where black people can go and build Fortune 500 companies from scratch within five years. It be like China, easily. No, seriously. And this took them hundreds of years to build. You can build it now within five years. China took that same, you know, mind state 25 years ago. China was no different from Africa 25 years ago. Go to China now. Look at Dubai, the Middle East. They just started 15 years ago and started no, building I'm, the same I'm, I'm kind of, um, me, me, just want to be 100%. I understand what, what you exactly mean. So you're saying that Africa right now. So how how can Africa be the new China? How how can we say that? So black we're people, for all our black people. Yes, go back to Africa. Okay, whatever you're doing here, do it there. Whether so, it's uh, real estate, uh, entertainment, education, label, sneaker company, whatever, clothing line, whatever. Start it there. Do it there. Don't even start it. Do it there. It's gonna grow out of there anyway. But Africa's big enough. You won't ever have to need no other country anyway. And a lot of black Americans look at that and they say, bitch, why? Fuck, I look like, why would I want to go to Africa? Bitch, I ain't from Africa. The fuck? My ancestral lineage is from Louisiana. We from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My great, 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 great grandmother built a house in North Carolina and she owned four acres and she earned, she owned this and she owned that. And my great, great lineage can be traced back to the 1600s in the south side of, you know, Virginia. So we should really stop letting black Americans think that they all come from Africa and stop forcing them to think that they have to invest into Africa because they don't know shit about Africa. They don't know shit about the language. All they know is America. This is their motherland. So we kind of have to be a lot more sensitive when it comes to people who don't want to be associated with the term African-American and just rather just be black. Just be black. So that way, if they're just black, that way, if it's under one umbrella and black can mean anything. Black can mean that they have ties to being Creole. Black can mean they have ties to being Native Indigenous. Black can mean they have ties to being from the Caribbean. Because not all black people are, in, are descendants of the American slaves. A lot of black people are actually descendants of the Caribbean, descendants of different parts of Latin America, and some black people even came from different parts of Europe. So let's be honest here, black people are everywhere, but the people who can trace back their lineage and know that their ancestral lineage is in the South, let's stop forcing them to think that they came from Africa because life might have started in Africa, but there's more to the story that I feel like a lot, of that, that's in my opinion, not being told. And many countries in Africa are stunning, like Cape Vadre, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and Somali. Go check it out when you get a chance, but listen to what Smokey Robinson had to say about the term African-American, and tell me what y'all think. How come I didn't get a chance to vote on who I'd like to be? Who gave you the right to make that decision for me? I ain't under your rule or in your dominion, and I'm entitled to my own opinion. Now, there are some African-Americans here, but they recently moved here from places like Kenya, Ethiopia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Zaire. But not a brother whose family's lived in this country for generations, occupying space in all the locations, New York, Miami, LA, Detroit, Chicago, even if he's wearing a dashiki and sporting an afro. And if you go to Africa in search of your race, you'll find out quick, you're not an African-American. You're just a black American in Africa taking up space. <laughs> Why you keep trying to attach yourself to a continent where even if you got the chance to go and you went, most people there wouldn't even claim you as one of them, as a purebred daughter or son of them. Your heritage is right here now, no matter what you call yourself or what you say. And a lot of people died to make it that way. 
And if you think America's a leader on inequality and suffering and grieving, how come there's so many people coming and so few leaving? <laughs> Rather than all this fine thought with America shit you promoting, if you want to change something, use your privilege. Get to the polls. Come as a voting. God knows we've earned the right to be called American Americans and be free at last. And rather than you moving forward with progress, you're dwelling in the past. We struggled too long, we've come too far. And to the folks that know who we were, let's be proud of who we are. We're the only people whose name is always a trend. When is this shit going to end? Look at all the different colors of our skin. Black is not our color, it's our core. It's what we've been living and fighting and dying for. But if you choose to be called African American and that's your preference, then I give you that reference. But I know on this issue I don't stand alone on my own. And if I do, then let me be me. And I'd appreciate it if when you see me, you say, there goes a man who says it loud. I'm black, I'm black, I'm a black American, and I'm proud, because I love being an American. And I love being black. I love being called black. Yeah, I said it, and I don't take it back. My next unpopular opinion that I know damn well YouTube would not be here for is Dave Chappelle had a motherfucking point when he said this shit comments made by rapper DaBaby when he targeted the LGBTQ plus community and individuals living with HIV during a recent concert in Miami. But you know, a lot of the LGBTQ community doesn't know DaBaby's history. He's a wild guy. He once shot a <laughs> and killed him in Walmart. <laughs> oh, this is true. Google it. DaBaby shot and killed a in Walmart in North Carolina. Nothing bad happened to his career. <laughs> Do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> In our country, you can shoot and kill a <laughs> but you better not hurt a gay person's feelings. <laughs> I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. I am just saying that those pussies that they got. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it's not pussy, but that's like beyond pussy or impossible pussy. You know what I mean? it, it tastes like pussy, but that's not quite what it is, is it? It's not blood, that's beet juice. And a lot of them will literally make black trans people like, literally like their mascots and say things such as, well, we must protect trans people because there's black trans people and black trans people. Matt, it's like a, we get it, we get it. You know, you're trying to be pro progressive and everything, but you're using black trans people as a way to push why you feel like everybody in the world should accept you and give you what you feel like belongs to you. And I feel as though that a lot of times, a lot of trans people can be very insensitive and don't understand that, yes, you do deserve to be respected, you, deserve, you do deserve to be loved, you do deserve all the rights, but let's not sit up here and, and obliterate the rights of women, you know what I'm saying? Dave Chappelle said it the best in one of his old Netflix specials. You know, LeBron James woke up one day, or someone that was built like LeBron James woke up one day and said he wanted to be trans. Do you think the whole world would be okay with him wanting to join the WNBA? Hell no. The world would be like, bitch, get your big ass out of here. So at the end of the day, we have to respect the fact that Dave Chappelle is entitled to his own opinion, and he kind of has a point. I don't completely agree with everything he said, but he, truth be told, really does have a point. At the end of the day, when it comes down to it, the trans community wants to cancel everyone that doesn't agree with them. People don't have to agree with you. At the end of the day, it's a gender identity. Your gender identity is what's on the inside. How the fuck y'all know someone like Gabrielle Union identifies as a woman? How do we know someone like, I don't freaking know, Whitney Houston? How do we know Whitney Houston identifies as a woman? How do we know that? How do we, how do we know she didn't identify as a gender or trans? You know what I mean? Or how do we know that she wasn't really trans? On It's like gender identity is literally on the inside. So, you know, this whole notion that we have to just sit up here and just make the whole world stop in order to accommodate to people's ideologies and opinions is crazy accept yourself for who you are and accept the people who accept you for who you are but people don't have to agree with it and at the end of the day people are entitled to their own opinion that's kind of how i see it on that i respect it i respect people regardless i don't really give a fuck about who lives their life and who does what but let Dave Chappelle have his fucking opinion it is what it is and to see all these people trying to make a point and people trying to like boycott him and trying to like do this little fake protest protest outside of netflix in california it's ridiculous Dave Chappelle kind of had a point at the end of the day, a lot of people in the trans community are very much entitled and they feel as though that their issues are very much overlapping in the black community. And 
I don't feel like it has any correlation. Oppression is still oppression. At the end of the day, people need to learn how to respect them and call them by their pronouns that they want to be respectfully called. But if people don't agree with it, then that's their prerogative. That's their opinion. Accept yourself for who you are. Don't accept the whole world to accept you. I don't expect the clans member to accept my black ass. I don't. Ex- I don't expect the damn you know the, the the racist people out there in the world to accept me or accept other people who look like me. That's their opinion. Stay over there. Don't oppress me for opportunities. And I'm gonna just stay in my lane. You stay in your lane, and we can keep it moving. We can coexist, and we can agree to disagree, and you can go to hell. Plain and simple. But I feel as though that the world has become so politically correct that a comedian can't even have his fucking opinion. And he knew what he was doing when he said that. He just wanted people to give him, give him attention. And he got the attention that he asked for and people gave it to him. And of course, mostly everyone stood by him. Even Netflix stood by him and said, fuck that. We don't care. Because Dave Chappelle is Dave Chappelle. You can't cancel Dave Chappelle. If y'all mad at Dave Chappelle, y'all better go rewatch The Chappelle Show. Listen, the fact that a lot of y'all are mad at what he said right here shows that a lot of y'all did not watch The Chappelle Show back in the day because... Yeah, it's completely okay to ghost people that you don't like, don't cling, don't click with, don't clash with, and don't care for. If you meet with somebody for the first time, hang out with them, kick it with them, or you hang out with them for the first two times and you realize they're not really for you and their vibe and energy don't match, then fuck that bitch. If you want to block them, then block them. If you want to stop fucking with them, stop fucking with them. I'd rather somebody block you and ghost you and not fuck with you after meeting you a couple times and not really caring for you like that, rather than them being a fake ass bitch and pretending to like you. Because there are people out there who will literally pretend to like you, but then secretly hate on you and secretly dis like you but they'll keep you around because they want some type of benefit they want someone to talk to someone to add to them mentally spiritually financially and they just want you around just for the sole purpose of having you around and they treat you like somebody that's on a list that they're ready to just cross off and that's called a narcissist somebody who will literally just keep you around and then just treat you like a damn item on their list that they can just cross off and then go on to the next so if people ghost you then it is what it is and if you ghost other people then it is what it is at least you know if you don't want to address them and tell them that you don't really care for them and you had to just ghost them, then I don't really mind at all. Ghost someone if you don't really fuck with them like that. And I respect it. I mean, I used to get kind of cringe and annoyed whenever I have situations like that. But then I realized that it's kind of important to protect your damn energy. So if you want to just fall back and stop fucking with somebody, that's perfectly fine. If y'all feel like y'all don't clash. Just don't lead them on. Don't be fake. Don't be fake nice. Just be like, hmm, okay, great. Nice to meet you. And keep it moving. Respectfully. And that's it. Nicki Minaj, unfortunately, is not a good person. And I hate to say it because, of course, we don't really know who she truly is. But it's really fucked up for her to le- legitimately discredit the w- the victim who allegedly was sexually assaulted by Kenneth Petty. And it's really sad and disheartening that Nicki Minaj even got herself involved in that shit. As we know, Nicki Minaj, of course, was able to get that whole $20 million case, you know, pushed off to the side because $20 million is a lot of fucking money. But truth be told, Nicki Minaj is not a good person. The fact that she legitimately felt the need to speak up for her man and speak up for this man who did these horrible things. The motherfucker got like 60 million mug shots. Motherfucker is a whole criminal and did horrible things. Of course, he paid a debt to society. But for her to stand by, get on social media and discredit this victim by saying, oh, she must have been a white woman type shit. Like, it's like, Nikki really, like, she really should have just shut the fuck up and minded her own business and let that shit be what it was. But Nikki wanted to, for some reason, get involved. Nikki, for some reason, wanted to call this victim. Nikki, for some reason, wanted to get her team and people that were associated with her involved. You know, Nikki Minaj knows good and well what she truly did or what her man truly did and how they truly try to intimidate this victim. And for Nikki to try to get involved is very disheartening and disgusting and it really shows her true character. So anytime I see this hate train going on, anytime I see people trying to hold her accountable, Nikki kind of get what she asked for. You reap what you sow, you know? That's why I always say you got to be careful what you put out there because anything you put out there, even if you put out something positive or something negative, comes slamming back times three. It'll come slam back times three, threefold, and everybody always gets what they deserve. So Nicki Minaj, she doesn't really strike me as a good person because it's really fucked up that she would legitimately try to intimidate this witness like that, discredit her story when this all was popping off a year and a half ago, and now all of a sudden, all the bars want to kiss her ass and be like, ha, the girl got her 20 million case, 20 million dollar case thrown out and people are pushing it aside and the judge don't care no more that doesn't mean the shit is still over that's pretty fucked up that the bars are just applauding this like y'all don't realize that she legitimately is enabling this whole situation trying to protect her man like y'all don't realize how fucked up that is y'all really just trying to like applaud her and be like period nikki got that shit thrown out i ain't got shit to do with her nikki got herself involved at the end of the day she may not get sued but it's pretty fucked up that we say protect Protect women at all costs. Believe women at all costs. But we don't really want to protect this woman. We don't want to believe this woman. It's okay if we question her story. It's okay if we want to sit up here and say that a lot of what she did back in the in the 90s when she was a teenager is a little bit questionable. 
but it's nothing to sit up here and to excuse Nikki's bad behavior. Nikki's not a good person because a good person wouldn't do that. And even if her man did make mistakes back in the day and she wanted to just move on and keep it moving, she could have easily just been like, okay, you know what? It's like, got nothing to do with me. I don't care what he did in his past. I'm in the now. He did what he did in his past. I'm moving forward. And that's that on that. That's what Nikki should have done. She should have just kept her fucking mouth shut and let her fucking music do the talking and, and leave it alone. Pull a Beyonce. What would Beyonce do if Jay-Z was associated with some shit like that? Let's be real here. Jay-Z is an alleged pedophile because Foxy Brown came forth, which, ooh, we're not going to get into that. But I can't wait for Foxy Brown to drop that damn book. Let's see what happens in December when her book comes out because I will be doing a video about that. My next unpopular opinion is Joe Biden is going to get reelected. End of story. I'm not going to say anything to that. Joe Biden's going to get reelected and let's see what happens. Four years, three years are going to go by very, very fast. He's going to get reelected, and we might end up getting the same shit that Obama gave us. So that's lit. My next unpopular opinion is I don't feel bad for Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams going through all her shit when it comes to her sickness, her trials and tribulations. A lot of it is sad, but I kind of don't really have any empathy for her because of what she put out there. You know, Wendy Williams has done some very heinous shit she's very pivotal in the pop culture realm we all have respect and love for wendy and what she's done you can't deny that but wendy williams going through all this shit right now kind of feels like her karma in a way all the horrible things she did all the stories she broke all the things she wasn't able to confirm how she did free from free and aj on 106 and park and put out that heinous rumor about her allegedly getting pregnant by jay-z that she couldn't even prove because she allegedly had a source that told her her doing all those shitty things back in the day. Her putting out false, horrible rumors that Judge Mathis repeatedly told her wasn't true about Judge Mathis. And all these days you're missing at work. And going okay. in and out of the bathroom right while I'm here okay. in the studio. As I told you, I've never used New York cocaine City, in are my you life. following me? Listen, I've never used cocaine in my life. Okay, well, never okay. In my tell life. me what else she alleged, so, Judge. She also alleged uh, uh, um, that... That I asked her to sleep with my wife. Yes, she yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yes. right. And so, and, and if you want to believe that ridiculous I, nonsense, you feel free to. I, but and you want to keep fueling it when I'm no not, one else has even asked me about well, it. Nobody else anyone, keeps it real like Everyone this. in the media knows that tabloids print trash, but every week that they pay people to come up with you. Or anyone in this studio can is, go to a tabloid is, and tell them, I want to sell you a story on someone, and they'll buy it. Right. And if that's the type of stuff that you fuel on your show, and part feel of, free to. Part, but I don't know what judge, else you want me to tell judge, you. I also other got than it. I didn't do it. I also and got I have it from nothing a, to do with I, it. And listen. I don't know the woman. Never met her. Never used cocaine. Now, let's talk about fueling your stuff. You on the other hand, have admitted to being addicted to cocaine. Absolutely. Secondly, you continue to show symptoms of your addiction. Okay. Lastly, what I are those symptoms you tell me? These nasal passages you keep uh, yes. coughing up. And I did Secondly, aspirin. And I did you, aspirin. This eternal cold that you continue to have. Yes. Oh, that you yes. you can't have to come to work because every other okay. week now you even stupid so low as to blame it on your baby, your newborn. How low oh, can you get? Gosh. That's about as low as you can get to blame your child oh, for your cocaine gosh. addiction. Then, lastly, yes, lastly, judge. your bisexual activity. I'm oh, sure your no, uh, audience want to know about that. I'm I've heard that rumor. I'm sure and my finally, husband would love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he watches? Does he watch when you do it? Yes, don't wow. you know? No, I don't know. I didn't know you were that low down. And lastly, lastly, we can continue with what I heard about all those abortions. Like eight? You had eight wow. abortions? Wow, That's what I heard. That's the rumor. How now, you want to keep fueling that? Do you, did you write about that in your book? I wrote about abortion oh, in my okay. book. Yes. All eight of them? Yes. I, wrote, Ooh, I have an abortion. Goodness. Unlike you, Judge, I'll be worse. smarter about my book. I don't reveal everything for all free. Your sponsors People must to, buy my book to get the information that they need to, to get. to finance this radio show knowing that you had eight abortions, a cocaine addict, oh, and a bisexual. Wrong. Sponsors continue to put up money for this show. You know what, Judge? Hey, you you are better protesting. watch out for the anti-abortion crowd. I can tell you that. Let me just you say this. You better watch out for them. You better say something to them. Don't let, explain to no, me. Let, <laughs> let me say you something. You had no trial with me. That's who you Let me be say, say something with. to you yeah. and to everybody listening. Go right ahead. See, you you, thought, you, you are thought, the... You thought you were going to get me on here no, and hijack no, no, no. me. You but are you the, the Tyson Beckford. You got the wrong person, Donald. And the alleged abuse... And the alleged Me Too shit that he was putting out, that she was putting out on Judge Mathis back in the, back in the early 2000s, 
it's kind of hard to feel bad for Wendy Williams. And I might fuck around and do a whole video breakdown of all the shady things Wendy Williams has done. Got love for Wendy Williams, but I don't really feel bad for her when I find out that she's on hiatus because she's sick and she's on hiatus because she's going through this and her divorce and her man cheating on her man. It's like a... I mean, all this shit is sad, but it's like, girl, cover your own damn tea. Talk about your own personal life. And if you don't do that, then, I mean, it's kind of hard to kind of feel sympathy for someone who literally reaped what they sowed. You know, I guess she's doing a job, but at the same time, Wendy Williams, you've done some pretty heinous shit. And who knows that, if anything, this could be all her karma. And it's sad to say, but it's all sad what she's going through. But I don't really bat an eyelash when people say they don't feel bad for her. Oprah Winfrey is incredibly evil and I don't trust her at all. And I don't trust Oprah Winfrey specifically because I think it's horrible that one of her really, really good friends that she endorsed, John God, John the God, of course, we all know John the God was a spiritual, you know, very big in herbals, herbalism, very big on spirituality. Someone who was a healer in Brazil. It's very funny how, you know, all these horrible things came out by one of her friends who was out here raping, molesting, and treating women horribly. It's kind of funny how Oprah wants to do a documentary about Oprah, about Michael Jackson, and she wants to do a documentary about Russell Simmons and all these problematic men, and she wants to go on Twitter saying, we must condemn Bill Cosby and all types of shit, saying that we should do this and that and the third, and women this and women matter. But what about those women that were abused by John the God, one of her good friends that she endorsed and invited on her show why doesn't she go and make a documentary about him and all those women that were assaulted? What about the fact that this man is now going to be doing a lot of severe time and is being investigated still to this day? You know, isn't it crazy that Oprah endorsed this man? But for some reason, Oprah just sees it as a, oh my God, I didn't know. Bitch, really? You didn't know just like how you, didn't know th how you ain't know nothing about your friend Jeffrey Epstein and how you ain't know nothing about your friend Harvey Weinstein? Bitch, you got like six, 70 million pictures with them. How the fuck you ain't know? Something ain't, mm, something ain't sitting right here. Oprah got a lot of pictures with a lot of people, but she ain't got a lot of pictures with everybody. So it's a little bit suspicious how she got like five, six, seven, 60 million pictures with all these people, but yet she's sitting up here acting like she ain't know nothing. But yet you wanna talk about Michael Jackson? You wanna talk about Russell Simmons? Okay, girl, keep the same fucking energy. Keep, keep the same fucking energy, because I'm still a little bit pressed about what, she, what the fuck she did to Michael Jackson. Now, Michael Jackson, might, he might not have been innocent, completely innocent, which I believe he was innocent, but he might have been a weird man. But let's be real for a second. Oprah Winfrey is dead wrong for not keeping the same energy for her own little white friends who did the same problematic shit that, she, that Michael Jackson was accused of, allegedly, and similar, if anything. So Oprah Winfrey is incredibly evil. And it's funny how whenever I try to Google and do research about Oprah Winfrey and try to find out a lot about a lot about the problematic shit that she's tied to when it comes to the people that she's friends with. It's funny how Google always says debunked, 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 can't be proven, fact check, fact check, fact check. Oprah's a good God fearing woman. Oh my god, Oprah would never, Oprah would never fact check Oprah. Oh, fact check, fact check. That 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 video of Oprah with those people on her show, those are video shots. Like that's just a good example of the kind of shit Google would say. And it's really pathetic that the media will will repress and bury all this stuff and all the big publications won't even talk about it. Because of course, Oprah is America's darling, and we're not gonna hold Oprah accountable for her actions. And I believe in self-accountability for everyone. I believe everyone should be held accountable for their actions, but of course the truth will eventually come to the surface and eventually everyone always gets what they deserve in the end. My next popular opinion is Black Panther is and always will be an impactful movement for black people because of the representation. But let's be honest for a second. A lot of Black Panther fans don't realize that Black Panther isn't as black as we think it is. Yeah, it's good to see black people being put on and getting all these opportunities and making all this money and now it's the highest grossing Marvel film because black people supported it and now there's a market for representation. I'm tired of this shit because what we don't realize is how black are these movies and TV shows when we keep begging for a handout from the same people who own the same fucking corporations, who own the same film studios and the same corporations, the same companies. The fact that Black Panther is owned by Marvel and Marvel is owned by Disney and Disney is owned by the same people who own everything else, a.k.a. A big portion of the you know what community, aka the Jew community, which I have no problem. You know, the Jews got that money. They doing real good. They doing real good with their community. But let's be realistic for a second. It's a little bit disheartening to see that a lot of us, you know, get so pressed and so upset about the representation that's not shown, how we want more of it, but we don't realize that we're begging to be forced into these opportunities like the academy awards like we're begging to be a part of this stuff instead of building our own the same people who complain about being not being nominated for a grammy 
<laughs> the weekend never show up to the fucking BET Awards. The same people who bitch and complain about not not getting a Grammy, not performing at the fucking Grammys, not performing at the VMAs, wouldn't even fucking blink twice if the BET Awards didn't want to fucking book them, or if the Soul Train Awards didn't want to didn't want to book them. Some of them wouldn't even care to perform at the Soul Train Awards. They want to be accepted and assimilated to the very same people, the same elites who own every fucking thing. And it's kind of sad that we look at these people as a way to validate ourselves. Build your own table and stop looking to sit at everybody else's table. If they don't want to invite me to their fucking table, I'll say, fuck y'all. I'll build my own fucking tables with sticks and stones, and I'll make my table ten times stronger than y'all table to the point where you motherfuckers are going to want to sit over here because my table going to be the cool table. Because we constantly don't realize that a lot of these black sitcoms, black TV shows, and black movies aren't really that black because they're not owned by the same black people. A lot of these people don't realize... That the very same people that we think are running the shots and we see them in front of the TV, we think that they're everything and they're everywhere, but we don't realize that black people are being used as mascots. They use black people to sell fried chicken, love that chicken and Popeyes type shit. They love using black people to sell maple syrup. They love using black people to fucking sell movies and sell comic sketches and to be, you know, the rising cracking you know, comedian and make jokes, but we don't realize that a lot of these things aren't owned by us. So the point where I'm going with this is... It's funny how we praise all these things that we call blackness and black excellence, but a lot of us don't even own it. These rappers are owned. These ball players are owned. A lot of these people are owned. A lot of these things that we flash and love so much and uplift aren't even owned by us. So I guess where I'm going with this is do what Jay-Z and Beyonce did. Beyonce and Jay-Z are currently on the path of trying to take over the world of Rock Nation. So ownership is everything. And I want people to realize that. And that's what the Carters were trying to tell us on their album. That's what Jay-Z was trying to tell us on 444. And that's all I'm going to say on that. How black are these shows? How black are these sitcoms? How black are these movies when we're just being used as mascots? When we don't really own shit behind the scenes? When we're not really calling the shots behind the scenes? Look at Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon says something that people deem as anti-Semitic or anti-white. And guess what? He got he he was at risk of literally losing Wild and Out to the point where he went on a whole fucking two-week apology tour. How pathetic that he went from saying, I ain't apologizing for shit, to I'm educating myself. I'm going on a journey of education. And it's like, wow, like this is really pathetic. Really pathetic. And I really want everyone to realize that strive to own more than just a fucking iPhone and a damn YouTube channel and a social media platform. Because that's what I'm striving for. And I hope everyone watching this was a person of, you know, black, brown, Asian, whatever you are, strive to own something. Because the same people who own everything will own everything and everything and more if you don't own shit. Own something. It's okay if you want to support these things. If you can, It's okay if you like these things. If you can, It's okay if you like the art. But own something and learn something from these people's mistakes. Because the reason why you don't see much representation is because we don't call the shots because we don't own shit. And we don't care to own shit because we want quick money because we don't believe in ourselves. That's all I'm going to say. You can reprogram your mind in order to stop your anxiety. Yes, you can. And please don't hit me with that. No, you can't because it's a chemical imbalance. Yes, it may be, but you can reprogram your mind. When you're feeling anxious or exhausted to the point where you're anxious, start asking yourself, why am I so anxious? Or start telling yourself positive affirmations because I believe anxiety is like a demon that's like overweighing us. If it's not a demon, I look at it as like a dark cloud over our shoulders where we're getting polluted by our thoughts and the energy around us and we're absorbing the negative energy of our roommates, our parents, or whoever you're around, whoever you live with. And maybe your anxiety is trying to tell you to deal with something that you don't want to deal with. Your anxiety is just trying to tell you to handle something. Because if you're anxious about something and you're nervous about it, if you're nervous about something, then fix it. Rectify it. Are you anxious because you've been up all night and you still haven't gone to sleep? Then go the fuck to sleep, bitch. The fuck? Turn off your damn phone. Are you anxious because that person that you just sat down with who you thought you were cool with gave you a really bad vibe? Stop fucking with them. Are you anxious because your baby daddy ain't shit and you know he ain't shit and you can't stand me and you want to kick him out the house? Then kick him out the fucking house. Are you anxious because your kids are pissing you off and you know damn well you want to tell them about themselves but you're scared to tell them because you're scared of being too mean? Tell them about themselves. Put it all in check. Do what you got to do. Fix what you have to fix. Your anxiety is simply your intuition trying to tell you, deal with this, deal with this, deal with this, deal with this. Confront that person. Face that demon. Find out why you're getting anxious. Forgive that person. Fix this. Rectify this. Address this. Talk to yourself. Get therapy. Get medication for this. See, you can really reprogram your mind. When I say reprogram your mind, I mean you can easily figure out the root of your own issue by simply just sitting down for a second, thinking for a second why you're anxious, and you'll come. You'll, you'll literally get to the bottom of it. Sometimes people will literally get a therapist to prescribe them drugs to figure out why they're anxious as fuck, which I get, but a lot of times you already know the issue. Stop trying to minimize, dim down your anxiety because that means you're trying to dim down, minimize your demons. Your demons are only going to be hiding in the corner, but they're going to be right back when the meds, when the meds run out.
You know what I'm saying? So don't take that the wrong way. Take that as a place of love. You could reprogram your brain by fixing your issues. And a lot of times our issues stem from a person. No person, no problem. Fix the person who's putting you through that anxiety and your problems will go away. Address your demons. Face your demons. Don't be scared. I believe you can do it. But that's that for those un unpopular opinions that I know damn well YouTube would not be here for. I don't even know if I'm ever going to post this shit on YouTube because who child, I want the fuck in. And I said a lot of crazy shit that I know damn well I wouldn't say in a regular popular opinions on YouTube because I got to keep it, you know, not PG. I always keep shit rated R, but of course I always got to, you know, come through and give my unpopular opinions regardless of what platform I'm on. But of course I had to come on my podcast and really go the fuck cam on a lot of topics. A lot of y'all be asking me to address, but I know damn well YouTube will stop the fucking bag. But yeah, I got to get on here real quick. I had to get on here real quick, get my popular opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys loved it. Please be sure to hit my emails, hit my Instagram DMs, you know, subscribe to my Patreon if you aren't already. Shout out to everybody viewing on Patreon. Shout out to everybody listening on my podcast. Love you guys so much. Make sure you guys... Shit, I don't fucking know. I forgot. But shit, make sure you guys stay hydrated. But yeah, that's that. Timeout is over.